Okay class, uh, we're picking up with part 2 in 70-741 lab 10 and this will be the beginning of exercise 10.5 which is creating and configuring connection request policies. Connection request policies are used to establish sets of connections and settings that radius servers perform when authenticating, authorizing, and accounting connection requests through the radius clients. So on our network policy server we're going to go ahead and select policies and you see this plain little screen right here well this brings us to question number seven what does the default connection request policy do well you don't see the answer here do you this is going to be one of those questions where you actually have to read the text of your lesson to find the answer so make sure you're doing your reading as well as the labs and fill in question number seven. I'm going to right cl click on connection request policies and select new. For the policy name I'm going to type in connection request policy one. Under the type of network access server I'm going to select Remote Access Server VPN Dial-Up. We got this. Go ahead and take a screenshot and paste it into step number five. Once you've got that pasted in, go ahead and click Next. On the Specify Conditions page, click Add. In the specify conditions we're going to scroll down and you're going to look for tunnel type click on tunnel type and click add we're going to select IP encapsulating security payload in the tunnel mode that's ESP we're also going to select layer 2 tunneling protocol that's L2TP as well as secure socket tunneling program protocol SSTP so you should have three check marks there go ahead and click OK go ahead and click add once more we're going to scroll down and we're going to select daytime restriction somewhere here where is it right there day and time restrictions and click add in the day and time we're going to select Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and what you're going to do is you're going to come here to the 5 where the 5 would be that's 5 a.m and we're going to go to I'm sorry that's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. there's the 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and we're going to select permitted so starting at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday until 5 p.m. Monday through Friday this is what your screen should look like if it looks like that go ahead and click OK remember you gotta select permitted to get it be highlighted in blue click OK we so we have our tunnel type the type of protocols that are going to be accepted and when the connection will be accepted back on, on the screen we're going to click next on the forwarding request page we're going to click next on the authentication method screen we're going to click next on the configure settings we're going to click next on the completing we're going to go ahead and click finish okay so now let's see here uh, when created the connection policy is listed in the network policies and there it is
take a screenshot of your policies. Okay class, I was on the wrong node. I clicked on network policies. I didn't click on connection request policies which is what we were creating. This is the screenshot that you want. This is what it should look like. Here's your type of connection. Here's our policy one that we just created with our tunnel type and day and time restriction. Paste that screenshot into step number 18. Exercise 10.5 is done. Let's go ahead and do 10.6, creating and configuring network policies. Network policies establish sets of conditions, constraints, and settings that specify who is authorized to connect to the network and the circumstances under which the user can or cannot connect. So we're going to go ahead and now we're going to select network policies. We're going to right click on it and say new. When our wizard opens up, we're going to type in network policy one for the name. For the type of network access server, we're going to do our drop down and again we're going to select the remote access server VPN dialup. Now, question number eight. Okay, before we do question number eight, we need to go ahead and we need to click next. Okay, so now you're ready to answer question number eight, and it's time for you to go back to your textbook. Because I will tell you right now, there is a sentence where they talk about policies, and it's specifies exactly an NPS network policy evaluates remote connections based on the following three components. You're going to need to read that and that will give you your three components that make up the answer to question number eight. Once you've answered that we can go ahead and we can click add. We're going to select Windows groups and click add we're going to click on add groups and for the group we're going to type in domain guests and click OK. The group matches we click OK. We're going to go ahead and click next on the specify access permissions here we have to answer question number nine what is the default access permission what's already highlighted what's already selected with the radio button correct access granted so by default access will be granted next click next under configure authentication methods click next on the configure constraints page select idle timeout which should already be shown put a check mark beside disconnect after the maximum idle time and change the value to 15 so after 15 minutes the connection would disconnect We're going to go ahead and we're going to click next. On the configure settings page, click next. And we can now click finish. Now, if we look under network policies, we've got two network policies with green check marks and two with access. Two that grant access, two that deny access. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this view and paste it into step number 13. At this point we can go ahead and close our network policy server console. For our lab challenge we're going to use 
a command prompt. So I want you to go ahead and right click your start button and let's open up a, an admin command prompt. We're going to type in the command netsh, N-E-T-S-H, and press enter. Takes us to the netsh prompt. We're going to enter in NPS and press enter. This is exporting and importing the NPS configuration. So not just a policy, but an entire configuration. You can use the netsh command to export the entire NPS configuration, including radius clients and servers, network policy, connection request policy, registry, and logging configuration from one NPS server to another. So on the netsh NPS prompt, go ahead and type the command export space file name equals and then in quotes c colon backslash b a k dot xml and a closing quote excuse me <coughs> also a space export P S K equals yes. Be sure to type the command properly. That's export a space file name equals in quotes C colon backslash B A K dot XML a closing quote another space export P S K equals yes and press enter. And I typed it, I must have typed it incorrectly. Now, according to this, they want spaces. So let's try that again. Oh, I misspelled export. That was my problem. I bet you I don't have to have the spaces. I'm going to take those spaces back out just to see, as, see if what they have in the workbook is correct. Okay, so make sure that your, your spelling is correct. Mine was not. I'm going to press enter. Okay, now it worked. Let's take a look at the information that's on our screen. Because this gives us the answer to question number 10. What does the warning indicate? Well, let's read it. That it was successfully exported. Well, that's not a warning. That's just informational. The NPS server configuration file contains unencrypted shared secrets. Oh, that sounds important. For radius clients and members of remote radius server groups. Because of this, you should ensure that the file is stored in a secure location to prevent malicious users from accessing the file. Okay, so we need to make sure that because it has unencrypted information, unencrypted shared secrets, it needs to be stored in a secure location. Now, what would be the import command? Well, it's almost the same thing, a little bit different. But we're not going to do it from the NPS command prompt. We're going to type in exit first. Brings us back to a Windows prompt. And I'm going to type it in as a single string. Net sh NPS import file name equals quote c colon backslash b a k dot x m l and a closing quote let's make sure i typed all my words correctly this time 
Okay, it appears that I did. I'm going to press enter. And the message gives us that it was successfully imported. Take a screenshot if you've got this same information on your screen and paste it into step 7. This now concludes lab 10. Before exiting, please type exit to exit the command prompt and you are done. Thank you very much.